I was sitting on my couch, staring out the window. There was a terrible thunderstorm here in Thunder Bay. I was concerned for Emily because she was walking home from school today. I was pacing around the house, worried and hoping that she was alright. The sudden sound startled me. When I opened the door, I was relieved to see Emily, but she wasn't her usual, lively self. She seemed oddly upset. Emily, honey, are you alright? How is school today? I said in a concerned voice. Without saying a single word, she ran up the stairs. I thought I would let her calm down, so I started preparing supper. While cooking pasta, I couldn't help but think about my childhood and the delicious food my mom used to make. It was the pride of my band, of my people. Emily was in her room for a lot longer than usual, so out of worry, I made my way upstairs wanting to check up on her. Her eyes were glued to her laptop, so I leaned in closer, curious as to what she was staring at so intently. Anger, shock, and fear radiated through me. I didn't know what to feel about what I had just witnessed. On her screen, I saw pictures that triggered emotions I wanted gone. Pictures of our band, pictures of the very culture I rejected to keep my daughter safe. Emily! How dare you look at such things! I managed to stutter out despite being in a state of shock. Such things, Mom? That is our culture. I want to be proud of who I am. Like everyone else. Why can't you just allow me to express myself? You want to be proud of the reason I was beaten? The reason I cried every night? I walked out of the room in anger and frustration. I thought I had buried those fears deep inside of me, but they were back to haunt me. All of a sudden, I began to remember horrible memories that I wanted forgotten. I recalled how I was brutally abused for simply speaking my language, how I would be starved at that residential school because I expressed myself. Ironic how they called them schools. They were nothing but prisons. Just the thought of them terrified me, and the idea of Emily having to experience what I did sent chills down my spine. Tomorrow will be Emily's day off. I wanted to sort out our argument, so I went to my room immediately hoping to sleep. Unfortunately, my sleep was chased away by fragments of visions or hallucinations, memories that haven't left me. The next morning, Emily's mood didn't seem to have gotten any better. Good morning, sweetie, I said as I attempted to create conversation. In return, I was greeted with the harsh sound of silence. I was struck with pangs of guilt because I was the reason my daughter felt unwelcomed in her own home. I was the one forcing her to hide her own identity. However, I didn't know how to shut down my fears. Out of nowhere, Emily began to scream. Mom, I can't suppress my emotions anymore. I hate that I must hide who I am. When I'm asked about my culture at school, I have no answer. I don't know what value my name holds. Your name, Rosine, reflects you and is a big part of your identity. But what about me? I wanted to say it was nothing more than a name. But it was. It was a way for me to protect her from all the judgment and maltreatment I faced. Emily, I... I'm not sorry. I was simply trying to shield you from the pain I felt. My voice cracked as I said that last sentence on the verge of tears. It felt as though I was talking to a wall. My words had no effect on Emily. All my attempts at resurrecting our relationship were going in vain. I was so tired of fear controlling my life. Just when I thought I had recovered, it came back to destroy me and now my relationship with my daughter. After the outburst of emotions, the room was completely silent. I decided to go into the garden to clear my head. The roaring of the strong winds matched my conflicting emotions perfectly. Every time I considered overcoming my fears, I remembered my time in the residential schools. I pictured myself sitting on the cold, hard ground, terrified because I knew the hall monitor was coming to my room next. I clutched my head in pain as a sudden headache took over my entire body. I took a couple of deep breaths to calm myself down, knowing that Emily was alone inside the house. Walking in, I saw Emily sitting on the couch with her best friend Katie. I was glad to finally see Emily back to her normal self. She seemed content, and that made me happy. However, 
My smile disappeared almost as quickly as it appeared, as I overheard their conversation. Aren't you a First Nations, Emily? You never talk about your family or your culture. How come? Emily responded with complete silence. It crushed me to hear my daughter being questioned because of me. What kind of mother was I? How could I hurt my own daughter? The more I tried to protect Emily, the more I was hurting her. The darker atmosphere fit the bad energy in the room, and whether Katie left sensing the tension or sun setting was beyond me. Emily walked Katie to the door, and on her way, she glared at me. Nothing had ever hurt me more than my daughter's cold and angry expression. As the door shut, so did the slight bit of sympathy in Emily's heart for me. Mom, this is all your fault. I was embarrassed in front of my friend simply because you are too weak. Your cowardliness is ruining my life. Honey, try to understand what. No, Mom. For once, can you try to understand what I'm feeling? Emily yelled with fury. I felt horrible. I wanted to fix everything. I wanted to overcome my fears, but it seemed to be impossible. I stood there numbly as Emily stormed out of the house. I knew I couldn't stop her. She would never listen to me. Without <laughs> warning, tears began streaming down my face. Pain washed over me, along with regret. I should have stopped her. I needed to talk to somebody, so I called the one dependable person in my life, my husband. I zoned out as the phone rang. Hello. Seven. Emily left the house, and it's all my fault. I said frantically. Calm down, sweetie. You won't be able to find Emily unless you relax. I guess Sibin just heard it in my voice, as I didn't have to vocalize my feelings. I know those days still haunt you, but sweetie, you gain strength and courage from your experiences. Why don't you pass those values on to your daughter? Don't let your past ruin your present and future with Emily. Sibin's words put me at ease, allowing me to feel something I hadn't felt in a long time. Tranquility. Sorry, sweetie. I have to get back to work, but I will call you as soon as I'm free. Goodbye," said Zebin as he hung up the phone. An unwilling smile stretched across my face, and I decided to call Emily. I reached for the phone, and just as I did, my screen lit up, reading unknown number. Hello, is this Miss Rosine? Yes. Your daughter Emily is in the hospital. She was hit by a car, and ma'am. The police are saying she ran right into it. The phone fell out of my hand in shock. I ran to grab my car keys and made my way to the hospital as fast as I could. Frantically, I made my way through the unfamiliar halls, trying to find my injured daughter. Suddenly, the nurse stopped me and asked, "Ma'am, is there anything I can help you with?" Yes, I was looking for my daughter Emily. Follow me," she said sympathetically. She guided me to Emily's room. I saw her laying down in a hospital bed, hooked up to machines I couldn't even name. She appeared to be in a delicate condition, and the only thing that gave me slight comfort was the rise and fall of her chest. I wanted to apologize to her, tell her that I was sorry for being the reason she was here, for tying her down with my own insecurities, and most importantly, not being a good mother. Mom, is that you? Emily, I'm so glad you're all right. I was worried sick. This is all my fault. I should have never let my fears affect your childhood. I am so sorry. I said while wiping the tears rolling down my face. Mom, it's okay. All I wanted was for you to understand how I felt, but I shouldn't have considered your fears irrational either. Hearing Emily. Forgive me brought joy to my heart. I felt genuinely happy after a very long time. I lovingly placed my hand on top of Emily's, and in return, she squeezed it ever so slightly. That tiny bit of affection was enough to chase away the little fear I had left. The little girl whose finger I used to hold in times of hardship pulled me out of my scariest thoughts. <laughs>